any disruption of any existing. I can't hear. I'm sorry. You, you, we did a preliminary layout, um, and it appears that we can install one court with no tree removals. Um, mm -hmm. Two courts would be a little more challenging, uh, particularly if you wanted them in relative proximity to one another, which I would think you probably would. Where, where are you talking about putting them? Um, Joel thought we could get one of them um, right now that would run um, east. We were looking at one east-west and one north-south that we thought perhaps we could get in there without any tree removals. Are you um, in the river park? In river park. Oh, okay. Like, just like parallel to the soccer field? I mean, I don't, I'm just trying to figure um, out where it would be. In I'm not entirely sure how the soccer field is laid out, but one of them would be, um, would run east-west parallel to the, the Edgewood-ish property line. Okay. The other would probably have to be north-south parallel to the oak leaf. So they're back near that shelter structure? Yes, they would have to Back in that back corner, in that area, and there's yeah. the oak, the big oak tree mm -hmm. in the middle. Mm -hmm. But I think we'd want to look a little more closely, you know, mm -hmm. depending on how you wanted them situated in proximity to one another and how that impacts the trees. Mm -hmm. So this is a park improvement, too. When I ask that question, it's kind of a park improvement, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I think this is one we could do some fundraising for, too, let's see if the foundation would take down or if we could get some contributions, too. Okay. Yeah. I would agree with that. I think that this mm -hmm. is one that sounds good for some fundraising. And I don't know, what would the total cost on this be? Okay. Kind of Never played bocce ball in my life. <laughs> <laughs> no. Not in my life. Not in my life. Not in bocce ball. Group outing. I guess one thing I, part of the, would be if we, it was decided that this is a community need and we wanted to proceed with it, is location. I mean, River Park's kind of down in the corner of the village. Would, there be, would it be more appropriate to put it more centralized? Or, you know, I don't know, or school property? Or, From what we know, looked yeah. at, a, a regulation is um, almost, what, 90 feet long? Mm -hmm. okay. River wow. Park is the only place that we have that kind of space. Even the outside village center, where everyone talks about chessboards and stuff? Oh. Uh, yes, even there. I mean, well, I mean, think of it. That's home plate to the pitcher's mound, right? right? Or between oh, bases. Space. I'm sorry, yeah. first base to home plate. That's a fairly decent distance. Mm -hmm. I don't think we have that kind of space at, at the village center. Yeah, maybe it's something we could ask the county if they could locate in Estabrook. Right. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's perfect for, you know, the beer garden, frankly. Yes. Oh. Yeah. But yeah. we've never been into it. That's true. We've never but it'd be a nice community, yeah. So yeah. yeah. Well, okay. I mean, yeah. if the only, yeah, if, the, if we don't really have space for it, other, I mean, you really would want them next to each mm -hmm. other. Right. Um, so it seems oh. like if we don't have space for it, then maybe Estabrook is a better option for it. Huh. It's interesting. Maybe the county, county might be interested in the Friends of Estabrook. Estherbrook Park mm -hmm. near the beer garden would be nice. Yeah, I mean, it's really a nice nice activity. Yeah, you can get yeah, food yeah. and there's bathrooms. Mm -hmm. What do you think, Jenny? Well, I'd love it. The only thing is, uh, the beer garden is in Whitefish Bay. Yeah. So. Yeah. Right. Oh, just so true. you know. Right. Intergovernmental. Intergovernmental. Okay. That's it. Yeah, sure. I just want to say I do I do support that. I, I really like the idea of having bocce courts. I mean, the question again comes down to where we can fit them and where we can yeah. get them. Yeah. How much they cost? Whether we need to put them someplace else? But I, this idea keeps coming up, and I think there's some support for it. So. Well, we were too. I think River Park is so great. I mean, I've been down there a lot, getting on the Oak Lake Trail, and there are just like so many. Um, Older residents and oh, it's that's great. true. They would probably go into mm -hmm. it. People really yeah. use that in terms of like more passive recreation. Hmm. Well, maybe we could put one on River Park, sort of north south where the soccer field is, and then see how it's used and if it seems mm -hmm. popular and being used. To talk about a second one. I mean, mm -hmm. it's the location is perfect enough to work. Oh, good. Mm -hmm. So at least explore that first. Okay. So well, Sorry, thank you, Trustee McKaig and Trustee Warren, just when you have an opportunity to, uh, for us to speak. So I'm Brian Cothrell, I'm with the Little League Board, and uh, I'm here with uh, Arthur Ersink, who's also on the board, and then Tim Burkle. Um, this, the timing of this discussion is somewhat fortuitous, because at our last Shorewood Little League Board meeting, 
we were discussing the possibility of approaching the village about uh, building a second diamond at River Park. Um, that was something that, as I understand it, and I think all three of us are fairly new to the board, um, was under consideration in 2004 and speaking with our president, Rick Friesecke. It's a conversation that's come up with the village in the past. Uh, as recently as I understand it is 2016, uh, there are significant field restraints for us in terms of diamond usage. Uh, there's softball programs, there are coach pitch programs, t-ball programs, there are the schools, there's also uh, a program that is run by a local resident that's very popular. Um, it puts a, 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 it creates a lot of logistical issues for us. Um, in fact, this year we are using Esterbrook Park uh, for some of our practices and that presents challenges because uh, the county does not allow you to come in pre-season and say we'd like this night at this time slot. You have um, limited availability for practices. You have to come in the week before for mm -hmm. games you can schedule a little far in advance but only on certain nights. Uh, so it's created some issues in terms of scheduling for us and our program is growing, um, uh, which is a positive sign. Uh, we think we add a lot to the community. We had great turnout on Saturday for our annual picnic. Um, much as Trustee Amenta noted, uh, if we had two diamonds, we could host tournaments, um, which would be a, a benefit, um, we think, to both the community and our program. Um, so, you know, just hearing the discussion about what the potential options are for bocce court, um, you know, our initial thought was, and, and we haven't made a decision as a board to approach the village, but I, I think we're going to, uh, and we'd make that decision fairly shortly. Uh, and if we did, we think there's a way it can work. We've got some preliminary schematics about what a field might look like. Um, but we wanted to add that to the conversation and make the trustees aware that that was something we were going to ask the village about. Well, thank you. We appreciate it. So there, um, in the last just couple of months, I actually found an agreement that the village has with Little League Group, right? Um, that, you know, kind of talks about the park and how it's used and the different parameters. It actually comes up. Um, for renewal in this upcoming year. So um, I don't know if any of these conversations have synergy. They seem to have some to me. Um, we also have a current existing park plan. Um, and so, and there's um, planning that, from my understanding, the last time planning took place for that, all the different groups were involved. So, and there might be others, I don't know. But we want to maybe want to have that conversation engage the Parks Commission and, and Little League and just talking about it in general. Um, we also have MMSD's Edgewater Sewer Project coming up in 2021. And you know, we're at the table for that as they start the design process for how they're going to proceed. Um, we don't know for sure, but there may or may not be access issues from the intersection of Oakland and Edgewater. Um, so as we, they continue to go through the design process, we just want to make sure we're starting those conversations if, and it's an if, there's not a known plan for that because they're in design, but um, if there are access issues, when would those might be, and how many of those impact some of our other organizations who utilize the park? Um, and that's that. Yeah, I think the Parks Commission, you know, if there's competing um, desires for space and recreation. The park, I mean, we really need the Parks Commission to step up and help us out. It, it, and I don't know if you could help me just with my reference point, but in the past, as improvements have been made, um, have they all gone through the Parks Commission, or has it been another way of operating? Have there been any other groups that you've included? It's always been the Parks Commission, and then whatever stakeholder group is, right. you know, has an interest in the particular park. Okay. Kickers used to be the soccer. The kickers was the other big group. Right. Very um, interested because they're always yeah. looking for space for soccer fields. And we've always looked at the schools. You know, when you look right. at the a comprehensive open space plan, it's, the, it's our parks, but also the schools. Mm -hmm. And there's a new, where the field is at Lake Bluff, that used to, that didn't used to be a baseball field, right? That was something else. Mm. 
Mm -hmm. It was tennis courts. And the tennis courts were taken out. Now there's a field. Mm -hmm. But then we, then we collaborated with the school to build the two new tennis courts at Lake Bluff. So we, you know, we kind of look at the, all those things together. Okay. And I have, I participated in those phases. Oh. So I don't know institutional knowledge, but okay. it's not going to replace, you know, going at it again. And it's 2020, mm -hmm. not 2016, not 2004. Any further comments on bocce books? <laughs> bigger, con <laughs> bigger, con <laughs> bigger conversation. Bigger, yes. and, yeah, it sounds yes. like a bigger conversation. Um, okay. So with that, we'll move on to historic preservation. <coughs> Trustee Park. Okay. So with that, we have two trustees who also submitted um, with that as an initiative. Um, in talking with the planning development director, we can't do everything at once. So if this is a priority of the board and it moves forward, then the recommendation is to have zoning codes, um, so uh, zoning code updates um, be put off, other zoning code updates be put off until 2021. Where is that zoning code update? I, I read that, but I didn't know where is that prioritized? So the, the two, the, the two zoning code updates in 2020 the plan commission asked to look at were off street parking and a review of the zoning map. Okay, so just, just to be clear, because I had introduced in short preservation ordinance, you know, twice already and it didn't have a much support. So the zoning code update is what you're talking about. And so that kind of makes me nervous when you say, um, we'll put off because if, if we do the study as if we wait an entire year to implement anything, usually plans sit on the shelf. They just sit. And so because we've invested you know, 90 grand, if there are zoning changes uh, about parking that need to be made, uh, if there are competing interests, which I'm not sure they are, but that's what Scott's saying, then I wouldn't want to put those on hold. I wouldn't be starting something to finish it. But I certainly think this is the number one priority for the village. So I'm not sure why this can't be simultaneous. And the off street parking requirements will they will they be addressed by the transportation and parking mm -hmm. recommendations? I mean yes. what I, I would expect they would be, but because we don't have the analysis, that's going to tell us, you know, the 20 things that we should be looking at. It's hard for me to put that into my work plan. Mm -hmm. So my work plan currently has implementation of that analysis as like a placeholder. Mm -hmm. But if those recommendations don't impact the zoning code or things in my department and they're more, you know, whether they're enforcement or whether they're mm -hmm. parking yeah. permits, I'm not working on that then as much, right? So then I could be working on historic preservation, but if they come back and say, change all these things in the zoning code. I just need to be honest with my time, and you know, we've discussed the comprehensive plan is a big one that's gonna be right. next year. Mm -hmm. So I just need to be honest with my time to say if this is a priority, I would have to slot it in before those other ones, or if it's not as a priority, be slotted in afterwards. I just, I can't, in my current expectation, I cannot be doing both at the same time. So, so question for me, I'm wondering, any of these zoning code updates, are, are there, is there any element to them that are that statutorily required. That is, we've got the other compliance with anything if we don't, we push the updates back a year. No, they're just out of date. Okay. I have a question too about historic preservation. So there's an ordinance, but then many places have a commission. Do you need to have a commission to have the ordinance or how does that no. work? I don't believe so, but I would need to spend a lot more time before I can give advice on that. I mean, my expectation, my current expectation would be that our design review board who reviews architectural things right now would probably just need to have a, a once over to make sure that they have the right people on there that could implement the code. But I, I don't believe there's a requirement to have a preservation commission specifically, but. So, so this initiative is really writing and adopting an ordinance that would have, have some measure, of, but then we'd also have to designate properties, mm -hmm. right? I mean, that's my understanding of what it is. I didn't, right. beyond the topic, I don't know the specifics of what the hope is for the outcome and be a lot of, I mean, the historical society and the state historical society can give us a lot of support. Mm -hmm. I mean, a lot of work's been done. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of other ordinances to look at. Yeah. But I think it's also educating and having a much broader community discussion on 
where do people want to take this? I mean, it's there's as we've seen with the Albright Mansion, there's private property points of view, and then there's historical preservation. So it's kind of repicking up that discussion that was back started in 2009, and kind of with the floods got delayed. So and and so I think it's some educate more education and, and have pulling together the information that from the I historical agree. society to start start the process. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. I know BART's really overloaded, especially with the comprehensive plan. So I don't know if some of that can be just front uh, offloaded to residents and the mm -hmm. historical society. At least pull do the legwork to pull stuff together to, that can be looked at. Well, yeah, and committee chair, like if it went to TV and you know, committee uh, installations, whatever committee, like or strategic missions, who knows? But the committee chair could maybe work with you know the regular historical society. I, I agree with Monger 100 percent because I've asked Rebecca now, and she'll she'll agree I, twice. Like even if we adopted something, could we prohibit demolition? And I just don't. As much as I know about historic preservation, those are the kind of questions that I don't have answers for. And I think that educational of what can we do is really needed in our community because then we can decide whether it's an ordinance, whether it's a commission, whether it's, I don't know enough to make that decision. Yeah, yeah I think this is a broad, far ranging conversation. Mm -hmm. um, we're kind of starting at the beginning, so. So the kind of an ordinance that we'd have to, or not an ordinance, um, this initiative we have to work through from start to finish and yeah, figure out where, where, where ideally we'd land uh, with a lot of public input as well. But, I mean, I do think that, I, I think that a lot of people have realized we don't have any protections in place. And I mean, so I do, right. I, I don't know that it's necessarily, I, I, what I would think is that SIC could take it on, look at sample ordinances from other places, 